has too many job titles to fit into one sentence, so I'm just going to instead welcome Henry Rollins to South Africa again, and, and Henry, welcome to my living room. It's fantastic. I've always wanted a room like this. It's uh, declarative, laconic. Yeah. It operates in monosyllables. It's very masculine. Masculine. And, uh, I know that. I've also got a dictionary over there, so I'm going to go check out what you just said. Anyway. What did your high school guidance uh, counselor originally suggest you become? And have you listened to them? He suggested that I lift weights. And uh, he said a few other colorful things that I, I won't repeat. He didn't have much faith in me. Okay. So you basically went the alternative route. Yeah. I, I, was, I was very lucky. Uh, I, I went from the minimum wage working world into music, punk rock. It's a very wide road, so people with not a lot of talent can walk down it. And so it was punk rock that allowed me to get into music, and I was very lucky with all of that. And one thing led to another, into, you know, film and TV and voiceover work and radio stuff and everything else. Cool. Americans are known for their patriotism. Um, do you think patriotism is a healthy thing? Well, patriotism is a sentiment that is very subjective in that some people... Uh, would question your patriotism if you said the war in Iraq is illegal and wrong. Oh, well, you know, you're not a patriot. Well, in the Thomas Jefferson mold of dissent and discussion and debate, I am, actually. And as an American, uh, we are wont to let our opinions be heard thanks to the First Amendment of the Constitution. And so when someone would question my patriotism for saying that you know, the invasion and occupation of Iraq was in fact illegal and some people should go to jail for war crimes, like the entire Bush administration, um, I would always say, well, no, I'm, I'm actually being quintessentially American. Right. Uh, so patriotism is one of those things, it's uh, kind of where you find it. Right. You take a lot of trips to non-touristy destinations like uh, Afghanistan and Central Asia, places that are war-torn and in conflict. Uh, why is this? Why not just take like a, I don't know, a bus trip to the Eiffel Tower? I've done that too. I love the Eiffel Tower. You know, Paris is one of the great walking cities at night. I've done that many times in my life, but the world is a huge place and I'm very interested in it. And so whenever I can, I go as far and as wide into it. I've been, I've done, I've done France. I, I don't know how many times I've been to France. Okay. You've done Disneyland. Uh, actually the French one. Any, yeah, did, yeah, they need all the help they can get. No, no, I, okay. uh, y you go help them. All right, I think I they do need all the help they can get. I'll see what I can do. And you being here in South Africa, knowing that you prefer war-torn countries, what, is it, what are you saying about us? Well, no. I mean, I go wherever there's a gig. And as an American, it's, it's a little much for me to make much comment on the politics or the rights or wrongs of any other country. Uh, being an American, I don't get to say, hey, what's up with you guys? Uh, you're from America. Why don't you shut up? Yeah, your First Amendment means nothing to us right now. Well, you know, the, the First Amendment, you know, I can, you know, I can quote it. Uh, but a, a lot of Americans who talk to you about it all the time, it's my first, they're like, really? What, is, what does it say? Yeah. Uh, okay, whatever. Um, they can tell you, a South African, uh, about Zuma or Malema or any of that. Well, it is makes for interesting reading as someone who is interested in stuff. Yeah. I, I, I look at the stuff and uh, the, uh, the the death of uh, Eugene Terreblanche, interesting. The 3,000 people, uh, Nazi saluting his coffin at the funeral, it's a little disquieting. But mm -hmm. uh, I think I can just be a global citizen and sure. look at that and say, oh, what a drag. Yeah. <laughs> so. But enough of the politics. <coughs> You became big in the punk scene back in the day. That's where you started out, touring the country in a, a van with your band. Um, now, do you find that uh, you've mellowed since then, or uh, just love that rage? No, I'm a very angry person, yeah. a and so uh, I, I uh, think that I choose my targets with a bit more, uh, a bit more focus. But I'm, I was born angry. I'm angry now. And it's not because I didn't meet the nice girl and get the win the lottery. My anger is, is comes from what I see is people getting less than the the even break. 
in, in, in where I come from in America, there's people who are being disenfranchised by you know big pharmaceutical, by big insurance, by deregulation. The banks like have taken so many people and, and made them homeless. I cannot be apathetic in the face of that. I can't sit around and go, oh, everything's fine. That's not fine. Look at that guy. That's not yeah. fine. And so my anger is a very it's a civic based one. Right. I'm a, I'm mad at the man basically, and and uh, see fit to stick it to him as best I can, yeah, as often yeah. as I can. Because I mean, if you <clears throat> if you YouTube yourself, Henry Rollins, one of the biggest hits is you attacking a fan back in probably like the early '80s or something like that. Uh. But I suppose, like you say, it's more focused now. It's less about a, an annoying fan. Well, the guy was annoying. He's doing some interview, and so he it's a two-way street abuse. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm glad I'm glad you relaxed just for my own personal safety. No, I I never saw you. Yeah, I, I you know litigation. It's it's sure. it's money wasted. <laughs> sure, sure. Well, you know, it's a fair point. Now, Black Flag, uh, back in the punk scene days. Uh, at the same time, you also had uh, a lot of glam rock bands coming out. Uh, did you ever meet David Lee Roth from uh, Van Halen, the lead singer, and did he ever irritate you in any way? I've known David, David Lee Roth for many, many years. I helped him with his autobiography. Oh, wow. That's why you'll see my name in the back. Um, spent many, many hours, many, many days, many, many weeks with Dave working on that book with him. I've known him since 1983. And he might surprise you. He's multilingual. He's well-traveled. He's very well read. Mm. His whole family are all brainiacs. Like dad's an optometrist. Yeah. Sister is a is is a um, a psychoanalyst or something. He's a fascinating guy, who's uh, been there and done that. And uh, he's kind of like the Mark Twain of rock and roll. He's a very witty guy. Yeah. And uh, can he be annoying? Yeah. I mean, he's he loves the sound of his own voice, just like me and, and Joe Biden, the vice president of the United States. So, uh, your friends. But yeah, I, I've known Dave for well over. Well, I guess 20 years now. Did your band ever feel the kind of inclination to maybe try out some spandex and singing in falsetto with makeup? No, no, that was never, never would be me. No. What about in the privacy of your own home? No, no, no. Okay. But, you know, that might be your weekend. But it, it never, no, not, <clears throat> not for me. I'm asking the questions. But, yeah, yeah no, that's cool. Okay. Yeah. David Lee Roth, awesome. <laughs> Traveling the world, you meet a lot of Hank fans. Are Hank fans inherently the same, or do they differ from country to country? Travel. Well, people who check out what I do, uh, I have found them to be, uh, you know, I meet a lot of them. They seem to be a pretty nice bunch. You know, I, I, I meet them all the time after shows. I answer their mail. Uh, they seem to be uh, generally white, 50-50 male, female, from teenage to my age, which is 50. Um, and they seem well sometimes i get people in their 60s showing up people br now bring their parents right and go you know mom you should check this guy out i meet the mom after the show like who thinks I, I was pretty cool um so it's a it seems to be a fairly far and w wide range of people politically i'm i'm sure they mainly skew left yeah of I'd, center i'd think i'd think yeah. no rush, rush limbo fans or whatever his name is i actually was in the room with rush limbaugh a while ago he came in i left really quickly <laughs> so if you fit that demographic or you even beyond that demographic come and see henry he's here in the meantime we're going to spend some time in my living room some more i'd lo I love that the smell of naugahyde it, yeah it's, it's good we can read some hemingway yeah cheers see you later south africa Cheers. <laughs> <laughs>